Welcome to Strictly Speaking. I'm Bimbo Uluyidi. My first guest on the program is Mr. Steve Ayorinde. Steve, you're welcome to Strictly Speaking. Thank you. Thanks for having me. You know, you're here because you wear or have worn, should I say, many hats. You have uh, been an editor of two national dailies. You've been an arts editor. You've been an arts critic. You're an author. You've been um, commissioner of uh, uh, tourism in Lagos State, and you've also been commissioner for information and strategy in Lagos State. Yeah. So all of this suggests to me that for the last two decades, you've been working with words. That's correct. Good. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how you would assess the, I don't know, the, let me say the evolution of the usage of the English language since you have been working as a journalist? English is part of us, and because it's the official language, is the language of instruction, uh, it's basically what um, is used to define who is educated, you know. Um, but it looks to me like there are three classes of English users in Nigeria. Oh. Uh, those that are quite well acquainted with the language, you know, who do read, do speak um, uh, quite comfortably, mm -hmm. um, you know, um, using the English language. That's one extreme. The okay. other extreme would be those who really can't, you know, deal with it. Um, and then those who appear to be in between. Mm. And, and we tend to encounter, and I did encounter, quite a good chunk of such people, you know, those in the middle, um, either as an editor trying to recruit people or as a commissioner, as you said. Mm. Uh, the difference between the journalism editor's part of it and then working as a commissioner was that you could overlook those who were not very comfortable uh, with English because th those same people, even though educated, were good in other languages. And for Lagos State, you, you, need... needed, you needed Yoruba, yes. you needed Ugu, mm -hmm. and you needed Pidgin. Right. And you will find people that were quite comfortable you know, with such languages. Using those languages. Those languages, but not very comfortable using English. Yes. Would you say then that those that are at the, shall I say, lower end, mm. they are more comfortable using the indigenous languages and Pidgin English? People are a lot more relaxed and a lot more comfortable expressing themselves um, in either the indigenous language mm. or, or Pidgin English, which is part of the uh, factors uh, that we know that are responsible for why um, the quality or the standard of English, even among the so-called um, educated people, mm. you know, um, is falling. That is not to say that uh, indigenous languages do not have rules. It is Absolutely. just It is just that, and, and you will know uh, if, for example, you have studied a bit of Yoruba, you know, um, academically. Interestingly, it is English that will be used to teach you Yoruba, you know. Now that's... <laughs> <laughs> you know, funny, you know. Yes. Um, so you see that uh, people do not necessarily follow uh, the rules. I mean, I, I encourage speaking with friends, uh, speaking with my kids yes. in Yoruba. Uh, which is a good thing, actually. Which, which is a good thing. But mm -hmm. you see 70, 80% of, of the sort of um, Yoruba that you speak is just colloquial, really. You know, mm -hmm. how many people can do proverbs? How many people can, you know, follow the syntax and the structure, mm -hmm. you know, of the language? Yes, so if yes. you now relate that to the usage of English language, you mm -hmm. see that few and fewer people, yes. you know, by the day, uh, do manage to speak standard, mm -hmm. acceptable, correct, grammatically inclined English. English, yes. Uh, now, you spent many years uh, um, as an arts editor yes. as well. You covered the entertainment That's scene. Correct. Yeah. In your experience, do you think that the creative use of the language has improved? Has it evolved? Are we making better use? I think we are. I think that the usage of the language has evolved with the creativity, the sort of creativity that we have now. Um, I, I notice and I applaud the level of inventiveness 
that we are encountering, especially in Nigerian songs. And sometimes I worry and I'm like, are they not going to run out of ideas <laughs> and run out of you know, terms and mm. slangs and usage? But, but, but language is so elastic as you know. And dynamic. Uh, and mm. dynamic. And, and it's gratifying to see that even globally, um, native speakers of English mm. um, are now accepting that colonized or former colonies are now inventing words and, and dictionaries are incorporating them over time, which, is, which is how, you know, uh, language, you know, uh, uh, works. Mm. After a while, if there is a mass usage of a particular word, it becomes, you know, it the, becomes, norm. It becomes the norm, it becomes yes. acceptable. I see a, a, a buoyant attempt mm. you know, to incorporate, to, to make language a lot more dynamic, and not, not just the English language, mm. you know, uh, Yoruba inclusive, Pidgin especially. Um, it is the Nigerianness in the manner that English language is being used mm -hmm. that is drawing attention to us. There are areas that we may disagree with mm. if we choose to... To um, be too particular. And, and to act <laughs> as a moral police. <laughs> there will be areas definitely yes. that you disagree with. Mm. But even in disagreeing with the um, conclusions, with, with the submissions from uh, uh, creatives in the sector, you mm. can't fault the fact that there is still creativity. Uh, the inventiveness that we encounter on a daily basis uh, in the art world, in the creative circle, mm. uh, for me, is more of an advantage you know, right. in using you know, languages. So actually what you're saying is that despite yes. the decline in the English language generally... In the formal usage In the of formal it. usage, yes. yes. There is a general um, upsurge, if you like, of of creativity yes. that, um, that enables us to appreciate our own identity. Absolutely. Very correct. Okay. Very correct. Okay. And, and, and I think we shouldn't also divorce that from uh, what happened a few years ago when, if you recall, um, uh, the popular Indian writer and activist, uh, Haron Dati Roy, uh, won the Booker Prize with uh, God of Small Things. And part of what the Booker Prize Committee looked at was that the um, inventive usage of, um, uh, how, how, how did I put it, English, Indian oh, English, yes, you know, yes. in, in that beautiful, beautiful, you know, a novel. Mm. And, and I think quite a number of our, of our writers mm. are doing that too. I mean, you will encounter... Uh, 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 the Nigerian nitty thing mm. in Chimamanda's book, in Helen Nabila's, you know, a whole lot of other people, mm. you know. So mm. um, basically, it's to say that, yes, let us use English correctly mm -hmm. because that's, that's what defines, uh, that's what authenticates the education that we, that we are getting. Yes. But don't also uh, be... Imprisoned. Rigid. Exactly. <laughs> Buy it. You know, feel free. Create. Yes. I mean, yeah. they are creators. Mm. You, know, mm. you know, be creative with the language, mm. you know, mm. fly with the language, you know, basically. Steve, let's talk about your time as uh, a commissioner. Okay. I know that there are a large number of information officers that right. usually work in the ministry. That's right. And of course they are attached to their principals in the ministries, departments and agencies. And one expects that government policies should actually be promoted by a combination of their efforts. Mm. Both their uh, media aides mm. or, or information officers, mm. should I say, as well as, uh, as, as their principals. But I have a feeling that there's, there's, a, there's a bottleneck mm. somewhere. Mm. There is a, I don't know, there, there's a gap mm. between the people who should be um, uh, promoting the policies and those who should be receiving the policies. Mm. And because of that gap, perhaps we don't, government is not, is not moving the way it, it should. It's not moving at the speed at which it should. So whose responsibility is it to ensure that these messages are properly uh, delivered? Uh, thank you. Uh, it is the responsibility of the, of the government. My 
assessment, you know, uh, as somebody who has covered government, somebody mm -hmm. who has been, you know, spoken for government, and somebody who still, if you like, you know, reporting about government and consulting for government, mm -hmm. is to say that I do not think that government activities are underreported. I think the challenge at the bottleneck that you, um, you know, rightly spoke about has to do with not communicating effectively okay. and adequately. All right. um, and that can't be the function of just a single ministry. Mm. But you also have to understand that maybe half of people who work in government do not have any business in government. But we have to understand <laughs> that government um, is also a social, um, uh, if you like, uh, you know, uh, is it, it, a social enhancer, is a machinery to assist the society. Mm -hmm. And part of that is to say, we will employ you know, people. Whether they are qualified for what they've been employed for mm -hmm. is a different thing. But then, so you're now left with um, working with the good ones mm -hmm. among the large pool that are not very suitable. So as I said, government is not underreported. Mm. However, um, communi communicating what government is doing, doing can be a lot better, especially to the large pool of those who do not necessarily rely on the English language as their you know, mode of communication. All right. They are probably in the majority, even in Lagos. For me, all of this boils down to written and uh, verbal communication. That's correct. So I, I, I worry sometimes when I, I listen to principals um, making presentations and speeches, and I think to myself, first of all, did they write those speeches themselves? Mm. Or did their information officers write those speeches for them? Mm. Now, if the speeches were written for them, how many of them are aware of what actually the, the, the components mm. <laughs> of a good speech <laughs> so that when they get up to speak, they are not only doing themselves a favor, yeah. uh, they are also representing their, their government yeah. well. Yes. So these are some of the, the disconnects that, mm. that, that, that I see mm. and, and wonder about. Valid observations, no doubt. Uh, but I, I think, um, to be fair, Lagos has demonstrated um, um, capacity in being sensitive to the large pool of those who do not necessarily rely on formal formal information, information or formal news consumption. Mm. Uh, you mm. will see that LTV, for example, is the only station, I believe, in the state mm. that um, uses Ogo to communicate yes. because of that large you know, group. So before I, uh, I let you go, okay. <laughs> um, I thought I'd just give you a little summary of what it is that we're trying to do with this program, at least with this first segment um, of the program. Um, the kinds of experiences that um, uh, one has had over a period of time there's a clear indication to me that uh, there is a decline in the use of the English language. That's true. And uh, I felt that we should actually establish that problem yeah. and um, at the same time um, look at what the causes yeah. of the issue might be and then look at the effects yeah. by talking to different people from different sectors of society yeah. and how this decline in the English language is actually affecting various sectors. Yeah. So I want to thank you very much for coming on and um, kicking off this, uh, <laughs> this maiden edition of, uh, of the program. We're also going to look at um, uh, public speaking mm -hmm. and how, again, uh, it affects our daily lives. And our last segment will be um, looking at words, how people respond mm -hmm. to various words and phrases, either positively or or negatively. negatively. So uh, you can see that everything is really to do with words and, uh, and speech. So that's the strictly speaking story. <laughs> it's a good one. I mean, and, and congratulations. Uh, Thank you. You know, on the program, especially moving from uh, the published version of, you know, <laughs> the book <laughs> now to, to TV mm -hmm. yourself, really. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, uh, the industry needs um, something like this uh, because the decline is real. Mm. 
and it speaks to the heart of uh, part of the problem that we have uh, in Nigeria in terms of our education. Um, if there is a noticeable weakness in the usage of English language, you know, occasioned by how it's been taught, mm. you know, and, and how people are not learning sufficiently, mm. that in a way also is at the heart of the problem that we have in the general education sector. Yes. Because without you, without the students being um, adequately prepared in English, mm. it means there will be a lot, you know, there will be, they will also be weak in, in, other subjects, in other subjects because that's the that's exactly. the language of instruction yes. you know yes. uh, in our education so mm -hmm. congrats for uh, bringing you. attention to <laughs> a, a major problem that mm -hmm. you know should concern everybody hmm. well uh, the generation coming shouldn't be wasted it should not you know, it really so. shouldn't <laughs> mm -hmm. so i think we have uh, i think we have a responsibility mm. to um, to halt the, the, the decline. The decline. Yeah. That's correct. Yeah. That's it. Thank you so much for coming on the program, Steve. You're, you're more than I'm welcome. I'm very, very grateful. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.